Hello, Ms. Kremzik here. I'm here to talk to you about reaction forces on beams. Look at this example. This is a beam that has a 750 pound load on it. And a couple of things we need to notice about the beam. Number one, on this left side, I'm going to call this point A so that we know what we're referring to. Um, we have a triangle shape. This means that the beam is pinned here and that we are fixed point right here. So the beam's not allowed to move or um, anything here. So this is our pivot point. And then on the right here, there's a circle. This is a roller. And I'm going to call this point B, just so we have a common reference to talk about. This one, the beam is allowed to move left and right and flex as the um, materials will um, expand with heat and contract as they get cold. So the temperature makes your bridge change and we have to account for that. So this roller here helps us account for that. So the thing that you need to understand is there's different reactions at each different type of pin. For my ro uh, pinned connection here, that means my bridge is not allowed to move back, so there must be a reaction force in this direction. So I'm going to write R for reaction force at A in the X direction because it's going to go, it's going to push back when the bridge tries to push on it. Also at this pin connection, there is going to be a reaction force in the Y direction at A. But when we come over here to the roller, on the roller side, your bridge will be allowed to expand and contract, so there's no reaction back that's keeping this stationary on this end. So there's no reaction force in the X direction for the roller. But there is a reaction force. The beam rests on top of this pin, so the pin pushes back, or the roller, I'm calling it the wrong thing, I'm so sorry. The roller pushes back, and we're going to call this the reaction force at B in the Y direction. So you're going to have to put in your reaction forces on each drawing. Sometimes your pin can be on the other side and your roller can be over here. Then you'll just make sure rollers have one reaction force, pins have two. Now to find the forces acting on this beam, we need to do a three-step process. So if it's static in a fixed position, then it's not moving. So that would mean step one, where I'm going to do the sum of the forces in the x direction have to equal zero. So I'm going to look at my picture and find every single vector that's moving to the left and to the right. And so um, this is the only one and it's moving to the right. So I have R, A, X, and it's the only one, so it has to be zero. Easy enough. So I'm going to label RAX as zero pounds. So the second step in our three-step process is the sum of the forces in the Y direction must be zero. So now I'm going to look at everything that is going up and down, and those have to all add to be zero. So I have reaction force at A in the Y direction, plus I have a reaction force at B in the Y direction. Those are both going up, so they're both positive. And then I have the 750 pound force acting down, so I'm going to put negative 750 pounds. That's everything up or down has to equal zero. Now I'm noticing that I have two different variables here. So that means I'm going to need two different equations to solve them. So I'm going to have to find another equation that uses these variables in order to figure this out. So my third equation is making sure that the sum of the moments about A, because that's where my pin is, have to equal zero. Now let's remember that moments are all the forces times the distance they are away from your pivot point. So my first point is RAX, which is zero, times how far away from A is zero, plus 
my reaction force at A in the Y direction times how far away from A? Zero. Plus, um, I have 750 pounds and it's moving down. So I'm going to put negative 750 pounds times how far away from A is 8 feet. running out of room, I have to adjust here. Plus, we have this reaction force at B times how far away from A is 11. So all of those moments have to add to be zero if this is going to remain static and not move anywhere. So the first thing I notice is the zeros make this part be zero and this part's going to be zero. And so if I do negative 750 times 8, I get negative 6,000 foot-pounds plus 11 feet RBY equals 0 when I simplify this equation. This is good news because we only have one variable now. So I can use my algebra skills to solve for RBY. I'm going to move the 6,000 over. Solving for RBY, I'm going to divide by 11 feet. And I get an answer, RBY equals 545.45 repeating pounds. So I'm going to label my reaction force at B in the Y direction right here. That is now 545.45 repeating pounds. So now we know two of our three reaction forces. And so I can use this value of 545.45 in my original equation, my second equation, so that that leaves me, that eliminates a variable, and then I can just solve for A. So let me do that. So R A Y plus 545.45 repeating minus 750 equals 0. Then I'm going to combine like terms, this one and this one, and I get. Um, RAY minus, pen's running out of ink, 204.55 pounds equals zero. And when I add that over to the other side, I have RAY equals 204.55 pounds. So I'm going to add that to my drawing. That means this force right here acting back because it means the, the beam is pushing down with 204.55 pounds of pressure of force and so the reaction back is 204.55 pounds and that my friends is our first beam problem that we have solved I hope you enjoyed it very will get a little more difficult so please be looking for a couple more videos as we come across new things have a good day.